video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be expanding upon the um, the square we made in the last video because if I run it right now, you'll see the, what we did in the last video, which was just draw a tiny little square in the corner. And I mean, that's great and all, but that's not all that exciting. So we're going to talk about all, well not all, but a couple of the different things OpenGL lets us do with this square. So to start off with, let's talk about moving the square around. Now, obviously enough, I could just change all the numbers in here and make it move over a bit from just drawing it in a different location. But, you know, that's a big pain to have to go through all those numbers, especially once you get into really big things, like, I don't know, trying to draw a skyscraper I think I used in the last video, so I'll just stick with that example. So, yeah, not, not very fun. So what OpenGL does is it provides a, a method, and it, what it will do is it will shift it'll shift everything over in the entire matrix. And that's that one, that's actually really good because it, again, it gives you a lot of options for matrices, so you can use that to move around objects exactly like you want, more or less. So, we're going to do that here. And, if my stop lagging for some odd reason, I'm going to create that method. That method is called GL translate. And what this method will do is it translate f, excuse me, because it always takes three parameters, so you just have to specify the type of variable you're putting in, which I'm putting in floating point numbers. I'm just going to put in all zeros for now. Now, so what this does is it takes everything you're drawing, it will shift it over by a certain amount. It's it's like it's like if you took the whole piece of paper and just shifted it over a bit when you're trying to draw a picture. And result is the picture will be shifted over a bit. So that's kind of what's going on here. So we have x, y, and z. How much we want to shift in each axis. Now the z e axis we don't actually care about because again we're working in 2D, so that won't actually matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in x, I'm gonna shift it over by exactly one pixel. And this is gonna cause a slight problem. And if you've really been wrapping your head around the matrices, and I'd be I personally would be impressed if you'd already peripherally mapped around the matrices enough to understand this by yourself, but if you've been paying really close attention, you might be able to see what's wrong. So I'm just going to hit run, and in theory, what this should do is it should just shift the entire thing over by one pixel. So you see the same square, except one pixel over. So now let's hit run. Hmm, what was that? Let's run again, in case you missed it, because I don't know if the quarter picked it up. Yeah, you'll see the square just sort of zips across the screen. And if you picked up on this, congratulations. But if you didn't, here's what happens. Remember I said that uh, we're shifting the matrix over. We're doing a matrix-based operation. So what this will do is it'll shift the entire matrix over by one pixel, it'll draw a square, then it'll update display. Then when it goes to do it again, it clears the image, but we're starting with a matrix that's already been shifted over by one pixel. So when we shift it over for the second time, it's shifting over, the, it's shifting it over by one pixel, uh, shifting a matrix that's already been shifted over by one pixel, by one pixel. So it shifts it over by two pixels, and then three pixels, and four pixels, and so on and so on. And the reason it moves so fast is because we have such an amazingly high frame rate because we're just drawing a square. So what? we should do if we're do using these types of methods is just do gl load identity. And what that'll do is, again, that just clears the matrix. So now if I run it, you probably cannot see it, but it has been shifted over by exactly one pixel. If I shift it over by more, like 64, and it run, it's been shifted over by 64 pixels. So, there we go. Now I'm going to talk about rotating it. Because rotating it could be really hard. Now we're going to shift this up by 64 pixels just to make this a little bit more obvious. Now first, so rotating is done very simply with an OpenGL method called GeoRotate. And again, we have to specify the type of information we're giving it, so float. Now this actually takes four parameters, and I'll explain that in a second. So parameter one, the angle we want to rotate it by. I'm just going to rotate it by 45 degrees. 
Now the remaining three parameters lets us select which axes we want to rotate on. And that's useful be if we're in 3D space, but uh, in 2D space there's really only one way you can rotate, and that's more or less around the z-axis. So all we have to do, as long as we're rotating in 2D space, these are the preferred parameters. That'll give us full rotation in the z-axis and no rotation on the x and y-axis. And the z-axis is always pointing to the camera, so that's why that works. So now if it run, you notice, my square has been rotated by 45 degrees. So, there we go. These are probably the two most common sort of transformation operations you'll do with your shapes. And yeah. So, now, let's take all this big giant square thing, and let's put it into a method, because, let's face it, having to do this every time we want to draw a square it's gonna be a little bit of a pain. So, let's make a method for it. And we'll make it a generic method so that we can draw absolutely anything we want. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is do private static void. I'm just gonna call it draw rect. And I'm taking no parameters for now. And I'm just gonna take this and paste it. So, what I want to do in my draw rectangle. First off, I want a starting position. So I'll have a, f a so I'll have a float x and a float y. That's going to be where we draw it. Now I want the width and height. So I'll say float width and float height. And for now, that's all. That's good. We can just leave it there. And that beans has shifted everything over by one. I'll just use shut hotkey. There we go. And let's take these two now, put them above it. Now rotate we can actually take out completely for the time being because we actually aren't going to be doing any rotating in this method. So first off, we need to handle the x and y. How do we determine where we start drawing? Well that's done with the translate command, isn't it? So I'll just do x and y. There we go. We've moved over to where we're going to start drawing. Now width and height might, might not be completely obvious, but believe it or not, width is going to be where these 264s are, and height is going to be where these 264s are. Because, if you remember the grid thing from the last video, this is how much we're moving over in X, so that that will be the width. The width is how much we move over in X to the other end. And height is how much we're moving over in Y, if you remember, which also makes sense. I mean, we have to move over in Y that amount. So. I'm not going to go too heavy on explaining this because it's not critical that you understand on a per vertex level how everything's working, but there you go. So I've created a very simple method for drawing a rectangle. So I'm going to do draw rect. I'll start at position 56, 56, and I'll draw it out 128 by 256. So it should move over and up a little bit and draw me a tall rectangle. So let's see what happens. Hey, what do you know? It worked. Well, that's excellent. So now I'm going to draw another rectangle. I'm going to draw this one at um, 224 by 224. And width, oh, I'll, be, I'll just make it... I'll make it, I don't know, 512 wide, actually it's probably too big, 448 wide, and 32 tall. So if I run now, you'll notice it's sort of working, but if you pay close attention, you might notice a slight bit of a problem with this. And that is, if you, you look at here, this does not look like it's just a straight it does not look like it's proper and to show you a little bit more about what I mean if I decrease this and change it to 56 by 56 again you'll notice it's still not obvious okay I'll make it 112 by 56 
And you know, actually, I'm just what I'm going to actually end up doing here is I'm just going to be decreasing this to make it perfectly obvious what's going on here. Actually, I'll change this back to 56 since I can do that now. So now, if I don't freeze, I'm going to run. And you should hopefully be able to see what went wrong here, assuming it actually runs. And okay, we're back. Sorry, it did not want to run for some reason. I think it's because I hit run twice, but here you go. You notice I told both of them to draw at 56 by 56, but you notice they're drawn at two different positions. And you might be wondering why that is, but remember, when we shift the matrix over by 56 by 56, and we shift it over by 56 by 56 again, that causes a bit of an issue. So our method, not quite perfect just yet. But believe it or not, there's a way to fix this. Now, if you remember in video 2, I told you that these model view matrix and projection matrix and all that stuff, they weren't just one matrix. They were a group of matrices. So, if I add, in theory, if I added another matrix on there and I translated based on that, then I wouldn't have any problems. So, because I'd be only shifting over one matrix. So what we're going to do is we're going to give every single rectangle its own matrix. <coughs> that way we don't have any compounding effects because everything's happening in its own unique matrix. It has its own unique matrix to translate in. It has its own unique matrix to rotate in and yada yada yada. So here's the way we add matrices. We do something called GL push matrix. And the reason it's called push matrix is because it it goes back to how a stack works. And if you don't know a stack, um, this is not the video to be explaining a stack. If you don't know what a stack is, you should probably look it up. But when you add things to a stack, it's called pushing it, because you're like, like pushing it on to the top of the stack. So, oh, there you go. And then at the end we of doing all this drawing, we're done with this matrix, so we go GL pop matrix. And there we go, we've created our own unique matrix for this. And it, ev the, everything between these two curly braces, which again aren't necessary, but I just like putting them there, everything between these two braces happens in its own unique matrix. So now if I hit run, they should be coming from the exact same point. And they are. We're now getting a sort of L shape. Or rather sideways L, but still. So there we go. Now, this is really all we are going to need for the next thing I'm going to do with this, which you'll see in the next video. But just for the fun of it, I'm going to make this a little bit more powerful. I'm going to add a rotation to this. Just for the fun of it. And this way we can do GL rotate and it'll rotate the rotation and that gets us two-dimensional rotation. Because we're rotating on the z-axis and not the x and y-axis because those are all dealing with 3D space and stuff. So yeah. And if all goes well, then now we should be able to rotate things. So I'm going to rotate everything by zero for now. And now I'm going to hit run. And you notice nothing changed. But if I change this to rotating, oh, say 45 degrees. And I hit run. Then you'll notice, yeah, we have sort of, it's rotated around the origin point. So there you go, we have rotation. So, thank you everyone, I hope you enjoyed, but actually, you know, before I go, you might want to know how to fix that sort of, it's rotating around a point rather than the center, because I'm assuming some people want to know how to rotate around the center. And that actually has to do with how we're drawing it. And it also means that this will change, that these two parameters will do something a little bit different because these would refer to the center of a, 
the shape rather than the corner of the shape. But if you wanted to do this, here's the way I would do it. First off, I would divide width by 2 and height by 2. And the reason I'm going to do this is because um, I'm going to be drawing this a little bit differently. I'm going to be drawing from negative height to height and fr yeah so basically just start at fr um, negatives instead of the um, that, instead of zero place the zeros from negative so negative width and negative height and last zero will be negative height so you're placing the zeros with negative and making sure you spell everything correctly or oh, Bingeo and Java will be very mad at you so now this will be a little bit different because everything will be drawn based on the center. But actually I'm going to get rid of this rectangle just to make it a little bit more obvious. But there you go. And this isn't perfect. It's a little bit on the buggy end, but it's a very basic way to do the center-based drawing. And you notice rotation is working. But again, not perfect because we're doing division like that. And, or maybe I just screwed up the code somewhere, which is also very possible. Um, I don't think I did. I, I don't think I screwed up the code somewhere. Be ah. Negative width to height. Sorry. Everything in X has to be whipped, everything in Y has to be height. So, yeah, I screwed up the code somewhere. But you'll notice if I actually going to move this over a little bit more to make it a bit more obvious. I'm going to decrease the size. So now, if I run, you notice we have that. But if I rotate it by 32 degrees, then you'll see it's rotating based on the center and not from the corner. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed. And there's one more thing I need to do. Actually, I'm going to delete this because I personally, I want it to draw from um, from the corner. And I'm going to set this down a bit. I'm going to create a sort of wrapper method for this. And this way we don't have to have a um, rotation if we don't want to. And there we go. So, this t so hopefully you understand about basic transformation operations now. And yeah. And zero for rotation. So now we don't need to explicitly specify rotation when we don't have one. And there we go. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And thank you. So I'll see you in the next video where we will actually be developing a very basic game using OpenGL. So thank you and see you in the next video.